Hey, everybody, we are live with you on Facebook here on Tuesday evening. And I am always, as always, I'm very excited to be with you. And joining me is my dear friend, Ben Hughes. Ben, how are you doing? Hey, Rob, I'm very good. How are you? Good, good, good. Things are good in Texas? Absolutely. It's a little warmer today. It's been up and down like the crazy Texas weather that we are slowly getting used to. But yeah, today I think it was uh, high 80s, whereas the rest of this week... You know, we're constantly switching the AC from hot to cold to hot to cold. Crazy. Yeah, I know what you mean. We're trying. We're still waiting to switch. We we switched off heat, and we haven't switched on AC yet because it gets so crazy here. But so it is a little fluctuating. It's kind of hot here in my office today. But you know what's funny? As you were talking, I was thinking. I know we're quarantined. I know we're isolating. I know we're doing all that. But like you specifically, and like our friend Brad. I feel like I've seen more of you guys in the last two weeks than I have in the last two months. Now it's been this way, but I, I, I don't know. It's been one of the blessings of this season is connecting with so many people around the world via the web. Uh, well, thank God for the internet and for iPhones. And I'm one of these extroverts that I'm struggling to be honest. I'm struggling being locked up. I'm struggling not seeing people, but man, if we didn't, you know, if this had happened 10 years ago or we were on, on Nokia, and, and dial up internet or something then i think we'd all go really stir crazy so yeah for technology yeah that's for sure <laughs> well guys one of the reasons we wanted to connect with you this evening is um early on in this whole deal it was way before arizona even went into lockdown it was probably the first couple of days of us realizing where all this was going one of the promises god spoke to me was out of isaiah 45 3 that in this season there are secret riches that he has hidden for us in darkness. And it was, I think it was in my prayer time yesterday morning where the Lord was speaking to me about one of those secret riches, one of those hidden treasures he has for us, for you in this season is actually favor. And I found that very interesting until Holy Spirit and I started to unpack it. And then God put it on my heart to reach out to Ben to have him come on because he and Jody and, and Poured Out Ministries are such an example of what we're going to talk about that I wanted him to share with you and share the testimony and, and impart to you guys. But one of the things that the Lord put on my heart was Mary. In Luke 1, when the angel of the Lord shows up, heaven declares, begins the whole encounter by declaring through the angel, Blessed are you, highly favored of the Lord. And doesn't that sound wonderful to have an angel of God show up and, and have heaven through the angel, God through the angel declare you are blessed and highly favored. But then we know what happened. He starts to say, here's what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. You're going to get pregnant. And really what, what in the natural it looks like is very challenging circumstances. You're going to be an unwed 15-year-old pregnant woman who's, who, you know, you're going to have to explain this to fiance. You're going to have to explain this to your family. Your community is going to have questions. And even Mary herself had questions. So really, while, while heaven is showing up saying you are highly favored of the Lord, the circumstances in the natural are actually going to be quite challenging. And God was speaking to my heart about in seasons of confusion, challenges, difficulties, that's actually one of the seasons when we can increase radically in favor, but it begins with knowing heaven is declaring favor over us, that we're favored in heaven. And you may say, yeah, but I haven't an angel show up to declare that over me. I'll be blunt and tell you, you had something even better. You had, the, you had Jesus Christ show up at the cross for you. That's how highly favored you are by all of heaven. The cross declares that God loves you, favors you, blesses you, no matter what, because you're precious to him. So with that in mind and thinking through that and thinking through Mary's response where Mary had to decide one, because she said, I don't understand how this is going to work. And she had questions and she had concerns, but she ultimately lands in this beautiful place where she says, let it be under your servant as you have spoken. In other words, not according to my understanding, not according to how things will look in the natural, in the moment, or even in the next few weeks and months, but according to your word. And I believe she's saying not only for the receiving and birthing of Messiah, but for everything that was that word, including, okay, I'm going to decide to believe and declare and live from that I am favored in heaven, no matter what. And then what's interesting is later on, we start to see early fruit of this. Like she goes to Elizabeth's house. And what does Elizabeth say? Oh, how blessed am I that the mother 
mother of the Savior would come. How blessed am I that someone as favored as you? And to this day, Mary has a great level of favor in the church. So seasons like this, one of the treasures that are hidden in seasons like this, one of the secret riches in seasons like this is when we're facing challenges, when we're facing difficulties, to know that heaven has declared favor over us. And when we intentionally receive that, believe that and live from that, we will see an increase of favor in the earth. And Ben, just before we went live, I was saying to you another example of this that I saw was Joshua 3, 7, where God says to Joshua, now I will make your name great amongst the people. But Joshua had to walk through Joshua 1 and Joshua 2, which was knowing he was favored with God. God showing up and saying, hey, you're my guy. You have favor with me. I have, I have picked you. I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses. I'm going to actually use you to do what I couldn't even get done through Moses. You're my guy. You're favored. And Joshua had a lot of things to walk through. But then there came a moment when he had decided, yep, I'm doing it God's way. Uh, favor is not about my natural circumstances. It's about growing in favor. It's not about my natural circumstances. It's about how I respond to those natural circumstances, knowing I'm blessed, knowing I'm favored in heaven. And then there comes that time when now all of a sudden it's now you're going to see that increase of favor in the earth as well, because you've decided to believe me that I love you, that you're favored in heaven. And you and Jody, I mean, you guys, you have become a really good friend of mine and I, I so enjoy you. Um, and, and I just enjoy you as a friend, but I also love how you minister. We've ministered together several times. You guys are powerful revivalists. You're powerful in the prophetic. Um, the atmosphere of heaven flows with you everywhere you go. And you guys walk in, to me, what is one of the most unprecedented levels of favor in the, in the less than a year that I've known you, I have seen so much favor explode in your life. And what I love about it is you are so grateful for it. You were, you see it all as an opportunity to serve people and serve the kingdom of God. But in the time I've known you as favor has exploded. And I mean, this is a great compliment. You haven't changed at all. You're still my half Australian, half New Zealand mate. You're still my buddy. You're still this <laughs> down to earth, fun guy. You still want to get together for a laugh as much as for sharing revelation. And you have yet to tell me that you've become too big a deal for me. And that could happen any day because of what's going on. But I love that about you. So I wanted to share you with the audience, but also have you share with the audience about any keys that you've seen about what we're talking about, because you guys have also been through a lot. And I really would love for you to share with the, pe the people about the increase of favor that you guys have seen, but even more how you've responded to natural circumstances from the, the revelation that you know you're favored, you know you're anointed, and now you've come into a season where you're seeing that manifest in the earth as well. <laughs> we, we love you such, Rob. Love just your friendship and You've just got such an amazing heart for people. And I keep telling you, you're so pastoral. And uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you know, God has done some amazing things through our lives. You know, Jody and I have experienced, you know, the, this. And, you know, I, I think about it. And of course, it's 100% the grace of God. You know, it's 100%, uh, you know, the glory entirely belongs to Him. The, you know, He you know and we have been releasing ben, we're getting a little uh we're getting a little like resistance on the feed and i don't know if that's your end or my end 22 22 grace and uh in fact i now i'm not there? sure yeah. Okay. Good. You're back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Ben, um, if you don't mind, pick back up because I don't know if it was on my end or your end, but um, everything went kind of underwater robot voice for a minute because the stream was getting a little chunky. I've lost you again. Oh, okay. Are we hmm. good now? Yeah, I think so. I can see you and hear you. So hopefully everybody can see you and hear you as well. Guys, give us a thumbs up. I'll look at the comments on Facebook. Let us know if we're both still coming through. Okay. But I well, can I see can you, Ben. Again. Good. Okay. Yep. Let's let's so we'll let's just go. carry on. Sounds right. good. <laughs> so yeah. So you know, God truly is the God who opens doors that no man can shut. But you know, when you asked me about doing this stream, uh, you know, I've, my, I've just been reflecting and praying about it, 
and um, and thinking about what the Lord was wanting to say, you know, and one of the scriptures that really did come to mind, um, which is a really familiar one to all of us, but in Psalm 37, 4, when it says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart, you know, and what I've now that sounds on the there's a, there's a surface level of that you know when when we when we love Jesus with everything in us he loves to give us good gifts he wants to you know he's a good father he does gifts and surprises he right down to even little presents and things like that little surprises of just practical everyday things that we love but more than that you know light ourselves in the Lord there's this sense that our hearts become set up with His. And the things that really please his heart become the things that please our hearts. And, uh, you know, f- for example, I know for both Jody and I, one of the things that that um, we get so about that our hearts burn for is for the lost, is to see people saved, is to see souls saved, is for the gospel to be preached. You know? And so I think part of what the Lord has done is that he's opened up platforms for us to be able to preach the gospel and share Jesus with people. And there's been some incredible open doors for that to happen, not just in the last year, but even in the last 10 years, you know, we've seen amazing things happen. And then, then as are on the other side of that, when we're seeing people saved and we're thinking, Oh man, you know, that just, that, that gives us, and I, I don't want to just sound pious or religious, but honestly, there is nothing better. There's nothing better for me than I, that I can ever experience seeing people come to Jesus. People make that decision to give Jesus uh, their lives, you know, and be saved, healed, delivered. What is possibly better than that? Eternity's changed. And so I think as we delight ourselves in the Lord, now hearts become sent up with his heart. He gives us the desires of our hearts, you know. And so that looks like us actually seeing what our father loves and us loving that too. And so I think that's a major key to actually walking in favor. It all comes back to the fact that we are synced up with him, that we're, we're, we're spending time with him, that our, our hearts are one and we want to see what he wants to see. Um, does that make sense? Totally. And I think, you know, as you were sharing that, I was thinking, well, that is really the illustration we see with Mary where ultimately she's not that concerned about what it's going to look or sound like in the natural. She just wants God to have what's on his heart and is willing, let it be unto your servant as you have spoken. And knowing you and Jody, I can say that that is so your guy's heart as you've had huge opportunities open up for you with a whole new show that Sid Roth is producing for you and venues that are opening up for you and what you guys do every Saturday night. And if you guys aren't doing the um, Saturday night, God TV connect or God TV gather, online with Ward Simpson and Ben and Jody jump in on those things on Saturday evening. They're amazing. You guys had a quarter million people reach just last Saturday and, and dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of salvations. So that whole thing of, I think sometimes we are, we, we can all be guilty of measuring our favor by what we see in the natural. And as opposed to measuring our favor in, I'm favored in heaven. I'm favored. You know, I know one of the things I remember years ago when something was going on in Europe, a big event was going on and my wife saw the big event and she said, hey, aren't those aren't the people organizing that big event people you've worked with in Europe for years? And I said, yeah, she said, didn't you weren't you one of the first ministers to go over there? And I said, yeah, she said, why didn't they reach out to you? I said, I don't know. I said, but you know what I love is my role in the body is often God told me as a new minister, as a new believer who we called into ministry in the first year. He, he, one of the words he spoke to me is he said, can I use your forehead as a plow? And I didn't know what that meant. So I said, God, <laughs> what does that mean? And he said, here's what I want to do. I want to send you into hard places that most people won't go into. And I want to use you to break them open. And it will often feel like you're beating your forehead against a brick wall in the spirit because you kind of are. But cracks will come in the wall in the spirit. And then after you're there, others will come in. And in the spirit, it's like they'll put their fingers in the cracks and tear the walls down. And they'll be known for it. You won't. And my response was, well, God, as long as you get known for it, that's awesome. We just do. And it's interesting because now Yuri will come to me and we'll see patterns like this and other things. Something just happened last week that I won't go into. And we were talking on the phone one night and she was laughing. She said, did you see what so-and-so said, what so-and-so was going to do? And, and you'd been there. And I was like, 
that's awesome because I actually look at it this way and say, I get more time at home with my wife. I get to do what I'm called to do. And God is getting what he paid for. Now, no matter what level of, of exposure we're called to, we can never really measure our level of favor with heaven with how things look in the earth. But what I find interesting is the more that we look only to God in heaven to say, oh, all I want is my name known. To be, I just want my name known in heaven. I, I want I want to be one of those ones when I show up, God says, well done, good and faithful servants. And I know even for me, I've seen an increase of favor, an increase of opportunity in the last few years. But what, because you and Jody, again, you're such amazing examples of this. Share a little of your guys' testimony, because you have stories like when you were in the car and got frustrated um, because God had given you guys a promise and then it looked to go exactly the other way. Um, but you guys have been such Mary, such Joshua's in that no matter how things went in the natural, you chose again and again and again and again to be like Mary and say, not my will, but your, or like Jesus said in the desert, not my will, but yours be done. Or like Mary, let it be unto us according to your word. Whatever you need us to do, God will do. And I believe that's how we get into the increase of favor because Jesus, our Messiah and our model, it says grew in favor with God and with man. But what you were saying is so good because you guys were so focused on giving God what he wants, souls. And, and as you grew in favor with God for that, you came into a place where you grew in favor with man. But I know you, and we've had conversations where you guys look around sometimes and almost go, how did we get here? How are we sitting at this prophetic round table? How are we sitting in this studio producing a show? And I can look at you or having a show produced for us. And I can look at you guys and go, oh, I totally get it. It's because you're delighting in Lord the whole way, just like Mary did. So tell a little bit more of your guys' testimony. Yeah, look, I know sometimes, you know, people can look at ministers and, you know, who are, I guess, on a, on a platform or on media or something like that. And, and we can say things and, and it can almost be the response can almost be, well, that's all very well for you. You don't know my situation. And that's why I think sometimes it's really good for us to be able to share sometimes some of the journey that that gets us to those places and you know my wife and I have had we've been in ministry together since uh since we met 25 just over 25 years ago and we've had some we've had a real journey we've had some really tough challenges you know we've actually faced my wife nearly dying on many occasions uh, to the very edge where there was literally no hope and unless, uh, short of God, unless God intervened now, we were going to lose her, you know, and being in that place. And it's funny that you talk about Mary with an angel, you know, kind of showing up because we did have an angel show up. We had a, an angel come and stand on the end of our bed um, about 11 years ago and commission us to start our ministry, pour it out ministries. And the, I'm telling you that because of this, um, about 12, uh, that changed our lives overnight, you know, but. We immediately started to travel around the world. The Lord opened doors that we could never have possibly opened ourselves. But about 12, 18 months into that, suddenly we found ourselves going through this, uh, this health battle with my wife where she was literally on death's door. It was very, very grim. Uh, we talk about being in quarantine now. We couldn't leave the house for six months. She was right on the edge, you know, and, uh, and it was a constant daily battle. We had no money. We had no finance. Uh, we weren't able to travel ministry had, you know, we, we couldn't do anything. And so, and I found myself one day, you know, going and, um, and getting a, a food parcel from a local food bank. And I remember I did, I do talk about this in my book, Rob, but I remember I was walking around, you know, with my, with my box, you know, picking up this, this wilted spinach and this week old yogurt and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I, and I took my box of sadness, you know, and I'm, like, and I'm back to my car. Now, look, don't get me wrong. I'm very, very grateful for, you know, for everyone who gives out food and things like that. But this is just, I'm just sharing with you the yeah, state of my heart where definitely. I was at, you know. And, um, and so I get to my car, back to my car with this box, and I just burst into tears. And I, I you know, I just said, God, I said, you know, God, and angel came and stood on the end of our bed what the heck god you know i'm supposed to be feeding the world not i'm not supposed to be lining up for food parcels and the lord be and this was just a real moment of of vulnerability before the lord you know and he just began to speak to me and show me so many different 
places in the Bible, especially like with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, when, when they said, look, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, our God is able to deliver us from this fire, and he will. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow, you know? And that, that, there's that place of resolve that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had that, you know what? Yes, we are facing the fire. We're facing this difficult, impossible situation through no fault of our own. In fact, they, had, they were there because they were serving God, right? And they, they say, our God is able, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow. And of course, we think that would have been a wonderful time to, for Jesus to come riding in on the white horse and save, I'll oh, save you, stop, you know. And, but that's not what happened. They go into the fire and we know what happens there, that there's a fourth man standing in the fire and Jesus is with them in the fire. To cut it short, it's already long. He brings them through the fire. They come out the other side and basically a revival breaks out, you know. The, the, before the entire kingdom, Nebuchadnezzar says their God is God. No one will speak against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And suddenly they're elevated to this platform. And for the thousands of people who were out there in the kingdom, they just saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego on this platform. They didn't see the fire that they'd been through, you know, and this resolve that they had in their hearts just to serve God. No matter what, we believe with all our hearts, God is able and he will deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow. And, um, you know, that, that in that moment, there was an invitation from the Lord for me to come to that place of that same level of resolve with him. You know, will I, will I choose now to say, our God is able to deliver us, and he will, but even if he doesn't, I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to bow down in my heart. I'm not going to back off, you know. And sometimes we need to actually, it sounds a bit extreme, but sometimes we actually need to come to these places. You know, when we give our lives to Jesus, we literally give our lives to Jesus, even if it means death, even if it means death, right? Because this is the thing. Oh, death, where is your sting? Even if we die, we go to heaven, right? And I tell you, I'm looking forward to heaven. I'm, I'm genuinely excited for heaven. I'm looking forward to being there. So, so like what Paul said, to live is Christ. We live our lives right now in pursuit of him and glory, uh, you know, for his glory, for his purposes. And so I think once we can come to that kind of place, God is able to go, well, you know what? I, I can bring them through the fire and I can, I can elevate in different positions. And, uh, and because I think God, God knows that we can come to that place where he can, he can perhaps trust us and, I know that that's weird. I feel weird saying that because I'm talking about my, my wife and I, but, um, you know, I think about Joseph one really quickly. I'm not going to share much about this, but, you know, the pathway to the palace was through the prison, <laughs> you know, yeah. the very pathway to Joseph's promotion, the palace was actually went through the prison. He got promoted up into prime minister because of the fact that he was in the dungeon because he was in the prison and he was still saying yes to God, you know? And so not yeah. only that, it was not only the prison, but also the pit. And, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but he's in another amazing example of what we're talking about is that at some point in every part of that journey, beginning when his brothers have him in the pit and sell him into slavery, he's got to decide, am I favored in heaven? And you may say, well, I don't see that anywhere in the story. And those words may not not be used, but he has to make that decision. What does that look like? Am I going to trust God or am I going to give up? You know, it says that Joseph was tested by the promise. So often the promise does test us. That's not God testing us to make us jump through a hoop to earn something. It's testing in the sense of tested by fire. It's resolving something. It's purifying us like fire. And, and Ben, when you talked about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, I love that story. And one of my favorite things about that story is to help everybody see how incredibly power your, how powerful your favor with God is, is when Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego make that incredible declaration of our God is able, he'll do it. And even if he doesn't, we won't bow down to an idol. The immediate reaction is Nebuchadnezzar gets so mad. He says, you know what? turn up the heat, throw more fire in there. And what's the result of that? When he then orders them to be thrown in, the doors are open. It's his guards that are killed. 
He has now stoked it so hot, his guards are killed. So us agreeing with the favor we have in heaven, no matter how things look in the earth, that in itself has an impact on the enemy. That in itself gets up the devil nose. That in itself punches the devil and his minions in the snout. And when we're doing those things, when we're agree, because really, I think the secret here is agree with heaven in the earth, delight in the Lord, he'll give the desires of your heart. Don't let your level of favor that you walk in be determined by what you see in the earth. Let it be determined, in my opinion, by the cross of Calvary. So we know we're favored. We agree with that favor. That does damage to the enemy. And then there comes a time where because you continue to trust in God and the favor you have with him, even if you've been in the pit, even if you're in the prison right now, even if you were brought forth from the prison and put into a place of, of what seemed like a blessing like Potiphar's house and things go pear-shaped and sideways, you don't say, oh, to heck with this but you continue to declare, I am favored in heaven, this will all work out, because now you become somebody who can say at the end of Genesis, in Genesis 50, is it 20 or 50, 30, he says, yeah, what was meant for harm, God turned to the good, you know why? Because I know I'm his favorite, I know he loves me, and we should all be able to say that with confidence, especially in the difficult times, and I've seen some real challenges myself, but for me, it really boiled down to, I learned to trust in the goodness of God when nothing looked good, felt good, or seemed good for a very extended period of time. And yet that in itself, what I realized I was saying was, Lord, no matter how things look in the natural, I know you love me. I know you have good things for me. I know I'm favored and things will turn around according to your purposes and to your glory. And to that in mind, because we keep coming back to this agreeing with heaven while you're in the earth, agreeing with the fact that you're favored, even when th things don't look favored, then do me a favor and tell the story. And guys, if you haven't read Ben's book yet, um, When God Breaks In, I highly recommend it. I have read it. I, I, it actually, one chapter ended up taking me into a place of encounter. It's not just revelation and really good teaching and really good revelation. There is the presence of God on this book. Then God will begin to break into your circumstances as you read when God breaks in. But Ben, share the story about how you saw a whole new level of anointing manifest. And we can say power of God. We can say miracles. We can say favor of God. But the, one of the things that you had to learn to do was not go by what you were seeing, but go by the fact that you decided, I am anointed. And you saw an increase of anointing. And that could be, I am favored. You'll see an increase of favor. And that's, that, uh, that, that's such a good story for us because, as you know, I love teaching on we can't have more of God because he's given us everything, but we can live in the more. And one of the ways we do that is by agreeing with what we have. Yeah, well, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is Hebrews 11.6. In fact, every time I've signed my book, I've actually, I've written Hebrews 11.6 in it. And there's a couple of parts of it. But of course, it starts with that without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, the second part, which is what I usually kind of emphasize is that, is that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But that first part, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And, you know, it was about 10 or so years ago, I was actually, I had the, um, the, the privilege of traveling with a, an Aussie revivalist um, by the name of Chris Harvey. And um, we were doing a lot of revival meetings together and ministering together. And I remember we were in one meeting and we were praying for people on the altar. And every person that Chris would pray for would just fall out under the power of God. And almost nobody was having any kind of physical response when I was praying for them. And, uh, and I was talking with Chris about this after, which is one of the great things about traveling with, with people that, you know, become kind of mentors in your life. You get to ask these questions later. And I say, Chris, you know, look, what, what is going on here? You know, and he said, Ben, it's because you don't believe that you're anointed. And it was one of those kind of rhema revelations for me. It hit me, you know, in my spirit. It's like, yes, I am anointed. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of me. And so I made a shift in my heart, believing that I was anointed. The Holy Spirit was in me, on me, and moving through me. And I immediately, in the, in the coming meetings, I immediately saw an entirely different outcome when I'd pray for people, this shift, this level of power, this level of anointing that was flowing through me because now I believed and I knew that I was anointed and that God was with me. In fact, when the, the, 
you know, we hosted a revival in Australia, the Pineapple Revival. And right at the beginning, you know, the Holy Spirit, I love how the Holy Spirit teaches us on the job, you know, he's, he's there to guide us, counsel us, you know, and this is what I love about the Holy Spirit. And I was, I was in the beginning of the meeting and God was moving just powerfully. There was such a presence. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, I wonder if I blow in the microphone because the Lord had spoken to me about actually releasing the Holy Spirit through the breath of God, just like Jesus did. It's, there's no secret formula here. It was just something the Lord did for me. And, and I kind of had to say, I wonder if I just breathe in the microphone, whether it would be anointed and people might, you know, experience God in a way. And the Holy Spirit stopped me and said, no, Ben, don't blow in the microphone and see, know that the anointing is on you. And when you do this, you're going to release the glory and people will receive the Holy Spirit. And I was like, wow. So this, once again, this little shift just in my heart, knowing God was with me, knowing that I was anointed and I would, I would just breathe in the microphone and bang, people would, would be really touched by his power, you know? And so I know that that's a huge key. It's just actually, what do we believe? What do we know? And it's not, see the difference between faith and hope is hope. Hope is not sure. Hope is not necessarily certain. We have hope. Yes. But faith knows faith Sometimes people say, you know, faith is about risk. I, I actually don't like that, even though I understand what people are saying, because there's actually no risk in faith. That's right. Faith knows. Faith knows. Faith is being sure. Faith is being certain of what we do not see. It's the substance. It's the surety, right? And so, um, yeah, that's what I, why I love in Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, because the kingdom actually works and runs on faith. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with you. I mean, I, I love the hearts of the people that are saying faith is spelled R-I-S-K because they're saying step out, believe, take a risk. And, and, and that is good. We should take a risk. But I like what you're saying. And I agree with you is ultimately where it's going to come from is knowing being rooted and grounded in the truth. And again, hey, look, you can be watching this and saying, you know what, I've, I've always been one, doors have never opened for me, it's been hard to even make friends, let alone have favor, but don't go according to your natural circumstances. I get that you may have that as a history, but that's not your portion. The enemy, the enemy does not change, man, and his tactics from the beginning have basically been two things. Did God really say, and are you a son or are you a child or are you in relationship or let's put it this way are you family and are you favored and the answer to both of those must be yes and one of the things i've been meditating on this past week ben because of the secret riches that god has for us in this season and all those secret riches really boil down to what he wants to highlight for each of us that we already have and seasons like this when there's so few uh things to look to other than him it's a great time to be reminded of what we've been given but i've really been looking a lot at jesus's time in the desert when jesus is led by the holy spirit to go into the desert we see that he goes in filled with the holy spirit led by the holy spirit but then what's interesting is after the 40 days of temptation and answering back and pushing back against the temptation of the enemy which every single one of those temptations has an if involved in it and when he pushes back, declares the word of the Lord, chooses to believe the word of the Lord, my favorite being that first temptation, if you are a son, turn these stones to bread. And really, there's so much there because he's gone without food for 40 days. I believe the enemy's temptation is doubt the goodness of your father. He's not feeding you. He's not taking care of you. Obviously, you're not a son. Or if you are, you have an abusive father. Take care of yourself because you can't trust him. He's let you go hungry for 40 days. I love what Jesus says in, when he declares, man does not live by bread alone. And I love that he says man because he's come as a man on our behalf. The son of God became a son of man. So every son of man could become the son of God. So he's including him when he says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the father's mouth. And this is especially poignant when we realize the last words that it proceeded from the father's mouth to him, behold, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I believe what Jesus is saying is he pushes back against the temptation of the devil, which is look at your current circumstances to determine your relationship with your father. Look at your current natural set of circumstances and let that influence and impact your revelation of your father, your relationship with him, and the level of favor you have with him. And Jesus says, no, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to look to my father, know the level of relationship and favor I have with him. And that's going to impact my circumstances. So he does this for us. He models us to models it to us. But then what's brilliant to me is it clearly says in Luke that he came out of the desert in the power of the Holy Spirit. And much like what you were talking about, it, it, it's this decision he makes. He goes in filled with the Spirit. He comes out in the power of the Spirit. And it's not that he was a good boy, so he was rewarded power. I believe what it was is he knew he was a son, so he chose to operate in power, to exercise the power, to resist temptation by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he's using the muscles, developing the power muscles that he had, so he comes out in the power. And for any of us in this season, and we're talking about favor tonight, but anything, any promise, any blessing of God, seasons like this are such an opportunity to grow in the manifestation of those things by agreeing with what you have, choosing to believe it, choosing to declare it, and you will not just be filled with it, but you'll actually see powerful manifestations of it. Ben, back to your point of with the, what uh, the, the Chris told you about the anointing. No, you need to know you're anointed. And I'll say one further, guys, if you're, if you're tracking with this and you're getting something from what Ben's sharing and you're saying, yes, I get it, I'm going to do it. And you decide you're anointed. And the next time you blow on a microphone or the next time you pray for somebody, let's say they don't fall down. Don't be moved by that. You are anointed. You are blessed. You are highly favored of the Lord. If the next thing you go and do and you're not received, it's what is that? It's what Jesus models in the desert. It's a time to push back and say, yes, God really said I am anointed. Yes, God really said I'm favored. Yes, I am a son. Yes, I am a daughter. Yes, I am a child. Yes, I am loved. Yes, I have it all. I'm going to go out and be favored someplace else. Because what's happening is you're going to build to a level of breakthrough that will blow your mind. And Ben, back to you guys in your testimony, that you, that one situation you shared about after the angel came to you guys and the health challenges that you've walked through with Jody, who your wife is just as big a champion as you are. And Jody, I saw that you were on thanks for joining us. I'd love to hear from you as well, if we could pipe you in. Um, and if you're there and you want to jump in, please feel free to. Um, but Ben, talk a little bit more about the journey, because as you said, the people don't tend to see the fire, they tend to see the platform. And you guys now have been blessed with all these platforms. So wrap all this up with uh, for us with anything you want to share, or if Jody wants to jump in and share on this as well, um, any insights about encouraging the people again to operate, to believe in what they have, not be swayed by what they see in the natural, but do expect a shift in the natural. Yeah, look, I think it's really important to emphasize that, you know, we still need to be obedient. We need to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. We need to be obedient to God, you know, and yes, it's grace. Yes. I mean, I love what you're saying about sonship. That's a that's a very important, very, very important point, because I believe when we have that understanding of who we are, you know, then we're not moved by by platforms and we're not moved by fame and we're not moved by any of these kind of things. We're not trying to to, to uh, you know, achieve something in ministry to try and gain favor from God at all. No, we are a son, right? And I do believe also that because God is a good father, that unless we have that revelation of sonship, you know, that he's not going to, he's not going to put us in a place that will destroy us if we don't have that level of identity that we're walking in with him. Um, but, you know, we need to be obedient. We need to be, you know, the Bible clearly says that if we're faithful with the little, he'll, he'll give us much, you know, and so we need to be faithful where we are. We need to flourish where we're planted. We need to not, we need to just be willing to actually to serve with the doors that God has opened for us. You know, I think about the story of the talents. So if we're talking about favor, Rob, you know, I mean, Jesus very specifically gives this parable of the talents where someone's given one, someone's given two, someone's given five. And we know what happens. Ultimately, the person with the five talents was very faithful and obedient with the talents that he'd been given, whereas the person with the one wasn't faithful at all, so much so that the, the one was taken and then given to the person with the five. And so I think sometimes the grace of God is that we are given the talents and it's not about how much talent, 
we're given, how many opportunities, how many doors. It's about what we actually do with what we've been given. And we still need to say yes to Jesus. We, you know, we give him a yes when we give him our life, but that yes needs to be backed up with a million yeses. There's lots of opportunities along the journey to say no. There's, you know, and unfortunately the, the Christian life is the path is littered with people who, who they said no for whatever reason and perhaps haven't fulfilled the destiny or the call of God on their life. I think we're kidding ourselves. You know, I saw a meme go around a little while ago, um, Robert, and I don't know if you agree with me on this, but I'm just going for it. But, you know, this meme that said, this meme, and we're, hey, we're friends. We can, we can, we can uh, make up afterwards. But, uh, you know, this <laughs> meme said basically, don't think that you can, you know, you can screw up God's plan for your life. You're not powerful enough. I'm like, that's one of the biggest lies I've ever seen go around Facebook. Yes, you can screw up God's plan for your life. If you don't say yes to him, if you don't surrender to him, if you're not obedient to him, you know, here we have a situation with, with Jonah. I mean, <laughs> Jonah is like, uh-uh, I'm out of here. Yes, there was the fish and even the fish was the grace of God, you know, this opportunity. But let me tell you, he still could have said no. Judas said no. You know, the big difference between Judas and Peter, you know, they both betrayed Jesus. They both, Judah, Peter betrayed knowing Jesus to a little girl, right? A little girl, he said, I don't even know him. Judas went and sold him out for, for 30 pieces of silver. The difference is, is that, they, that Peter repented. The very next time we see Peter, he's running to Jesus. The next time we see him, he's running to the tomb. The next time we see Judas, he actually goes and kills himself. Mm -hmm right? What was the difference? It was that attitude of the heart to say, and now we know what, what happens to Peter. He gets a book in the Bible. He gets two books in the Bible. You know, he gets to lead the church. He gets elevated and we all know him. And, and Judas, unfortunately, his fate was not the same, you know? And so I think it's really important that, that we do say, hey, yes, we're all broken. Yes, the glory entirely goes to God. Yes, it's grace. But one thing God has given us is a choice to say yes to him, to choose to say yes you know, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we talk about them, that they could have bowed down. They could have actually bowed to their circumstances and actually walked away from the fire and they, you know, everything else. We wouldn't be talking about them today, but the fact is, is that they said yes to Jesus, you know, so that, you know that's all I want to say, Rob. That, that's a I think, really no, I agree. Point. I think it's amazing. It's, it's funny you bring this up because earlier today, I was having a very interesting conversation. I was in our studio doing some filming and was in the uh, hospitality room afterwards um, eating and we had people, you know, stationed in our social distance way around the, the hospitality room. There were three of us in there. I had this very interesting conversation with two people who I really love and really respect who are really, really solid Christians. But one of the things that came up with me is I said, you know, I think we need more teaching on the gift and the responsibility of free will. I don't think we quite understand the power and the, the responsibility of free will because I understand, and I know you do too, those memes, you're not powerful enough to screw up God's plan for your life. In other words, he's bigger than any of our mistakes, but you're absolutely right. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. We have to ultimately come to a place where we say yes to him. And I've heard you say this so many times, and I love it, that initial yes is followed up with hundreds and thousands of other yeses. The beauty of God is if in a moment we say no, he's not done with us. He'll circle back around and give us a multitude of chances to say yes. And I think that's what they mean by you can't screw it up. But ultimately, yeah, you've got to walk it out with him. And you and Jody and have done an amazing job. Obviously, Lauren and Keely, your guys' girls as well. You're an amazing family. You're an amazing team. And as we wrap up, uh, what I'm going to ask is for you to pray as you feel led Pray if you want to prophesy, do whatever you feel to by the Holy Spirit. But one thing I'd ask if Holy Spirit would lead you in this is to release a grace for those hundreds and thousands of other yeses and, and also the grace to be able to grab hold of what God has given us, who we are in God, so we can agree with that no matter what we see so that ultimately we will see great manifestations of it. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we just want to say we love you. We love you so much. And we just lift you up right now. We lift up the name of Jesus above every other name right now. You're awesome, God. You're so awesome. And I want to pray for every person listening right now. I pray for a fresh revelation of just who you are and who we are in you. God, that revelation of what it means to be a son and a daughter of the King of Kings. 
And just like you said in that parable of the prodigal son to the elder brother, all I have is yours. All I have is yours, son. Huh. And I pray that revelation would just be deep in every, every person's heart, God. Lord, I just want to release an impartation of favor. Lord, favor in the season. I thank you that you are the God of Isaiah 22, 22, the God who opens doors that no man can shut. And I want to speak those open doors of ministry, those open doors of opportunity. I speak those that blessing right now. I decree Isaiah 22, 22, open doors in Jesus' name right now, God. Ha. Huh. For your glory, Lord, for your namesake, God, that your name would be famous throughout the earth. God, that many people, Lord, would be coming to salvation. Many people would be healed. Many people would be delivered. God, so that you would get your full reward. Jesus, come get what you paid for in our lives. And God, I just ask you for the grace, Lord, to just to be able to say yes to you every day. We ask you for that grace, that your presence, Lord, that, that nearness. God, that boldness, Lord, that we would continually be able to say yes to you. It would be continually be able to say, just like Jesus taught us to say, God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in my life and my family's life. When we say that, we're basically saying not our will, but your will. Let your will be done perfectly in our lives, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just want to speak a blessing over all of our friends watching right now. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless your family. I bless your home. I bless your income. I bless your ministry right now, wherever it is, whether it's on a platform or whether it's in the supermarket, wherever it is, I bless your ministry right now. I bless your health. If anyone needs healing right now, I release healing in the mighty name of Jesus because he paid for it. By his stripes, you were healed. And so I command healing in the mighty name of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we love you, God. Ha, bless my friend too. Bless Robert. Bless Yuri right now in Jesus' <laughs> mighty name. Thank you, Amen. Lord. We receive yeah. it. And, and thank you, Ben. Um, be sh before we go, tell everybody where they can get, they can get more of you guys. And, and before you share on that, guys, don't forget Facebook Live, um, God TV's Gather, Saturday night, 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can do the math across the USA or to whatever plus GMT time zone you're in. But um, gather with Ben and Jody and Ward Simpson and, and wonderful worship. And they, they share word and insight. They prophesy. They pray for people. They interact with people online. And you can join hundreds of thousands of people around the world as they do it. Ben, in addition to the Saturday night streaming events you're doing with God TV, where can they get your book? And where can they get more from you and Jody? Yeah, well, our ministry is called Pour It Out Ministries. So you can find us on Facebook under Pour It Out Ministries. You can go to our website, pouritout.org. And uh, of course, just our personal Facebooks as well. But but everything's there on our website or our, our Facebook ministry page. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, and again, his book is called When God Breaks In. I highly recommend it. Um, don't forget to join me tomorrow afternoon on Wednesday when I'll be live from our studio with a new episode of Heroes Arise. If you haven't uh, downloaded the Heroes Arise podcast yet, go to the Apple podcast store, grab Heroes Arise. You can take it with you wherever you go. Lots of encouragement, lots of empowerment, and lots of insight for you in these wonderful, challenging seasons of blessed opportunity that we're in. So don't forget, I know things are challenging right now, but God has treasures hidden for you. See secret riches in the darkness. Turn to him, worship him, be reminded who he is in this season, because remember, you're made in his image. So as you're reminded who he is, he's going to remind you who you are. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you guys again soon.